of this uh, Zacchaeus study. Picture of God's elect. Luke chapter 19, and we're going to get started right at verse 8. We're going to look at verse 8 and, uh, and start about the middle of it where we left off. It says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So there's a lot to work with just in that little verse right there. But um, first of all, this we're going to look at this part where it says, if I have taken anything from any man. And that, that word man in the Greek means a certain one or someone. And in Luke chapter 10, it's translated certain. In verse 33 there, Luke 10, 33, it says, But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. We know that's, that Samaritan is the Lord Jesus Christ, a picture of the Good Samaritan. But here it's translated certain. Also, if you want to go over to John chapter 15, In verse 13 there. There it says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And that word man is the same Greek word there. So we know that when, when we look at the language there in Luke 19, where Zacchaeus says, If I have... If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, that any man is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to um, see what the false accusation means. Um, this word false accusation also in the Greek means to defraud or rob. Okay? And <clears throat> in Malachi 3.8, the Bible says, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. So how do we rob God? By our sins. Our sins, we rob God. <clears throat> I'll show you what I mean. If we go over to Jeremiah chapter 7, look at verse, uh, look at verse 8 there. Jeremiah 7, and look at verse 8. It says there, Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense unto Baal, walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house which is called by my name, and say we are delivered to do all these abominations? Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers? In your eyes, behold, even I have seen it, said the Lord. See how it's the, the, he lists some sins there, and then he, he puts right with that den of robbers. So we rob God by our sins. And so Zacchaeus says, if I have robbed any man, or if I have defrauded any man, and we know that we rob God, our sins, because of our sins we rob God, <coughs> And <clears throat> it goes on and says, <clears throat> I will restore him. If we go back to Luke 19, verse 8. If I have taken anything from any man by false accusation or by robbing him, I restore him fourfold. And this word restore means to give up, give over, give back, render. And what do we do? What do we restore to God when we're born again? We're born of God. We restore our life, our, our fellowship. For example, in Romans chapter 12, I'll read this to you in verse 1 and 2 there. Romans 12, 1 and 2. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So there's a life-changing um, experience there when we're born from above. So we, we restore our fellowship. We have fellowship with God. We have, um, we're partakers with God. For example, um, in 1 Corinthians, it talks about fellowship there. Verse uh, chapter 1 and verse 9 there. 1 Corinthians 1, 9. It says, God is faithful, faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So, we know that we have fellowship with God when we become saved. In 1 John, it talks about you have fellowship. In fact, I like to read that over there in 1 John. It's uh, chapter 1 and verse 3 there. It says, That which we have seen and heard declared we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. So we have fellowship with God. We restore, uh, Zacchaeus says, I will restore um, him fourfold. Now, we're going to take a little time to look at this fourfold because we need to see what the spiritual teaching is there. What does he mean, fourfold? So it's not saying that if you take a dollar, you give them four dollars. It's not a literal type of understanding. We have to understand what fourfold means. And um, this Greek word is only used one time in the New Testament. And that's right here in Luke 19. And so we need to go to the other verses um, in the scriptures to see how God brings this out. We can understand fourfold. And the, the, what I'd like to bring out first is, is the meaning of that fourfold. It's, it's derived from two Greek words. It means the number four. And the second one is much. I thought, isn't that something? Much. Because it has to tie in what fourfold means. But, um, and I'll show you in Mark chapter 1 where this, where this uh, word much is used. In verse 45, Mark chapter 1, verse 45. It says, this is about the leper that was cleansed. But in verse 45, it says, he went out and began to publish it much. That word much is derived from this fourfold. And... Uh, and so, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in the desert. And they came to him from every quarter. And so, this publish means to proclaim, herald the gospel. And um, this, is the, this is the characteristic when we're saved. We speak forth the word of God, and just like this leper did when he was cleansed. That's, that's how we are before we're saved. We're lepers. And um, Christ has to cleanse us from our sins, from unclean, uh, cleanness. And so, um, so the fourfold is, means quadruple, four, but it's, but it's derived from these two words, number four and much. Okay, so I want to go to uh, Exodus 22 right now and try to uh, uh, get, get into this fourfold or how God uses some of this language. It's also brought out in 2 Samuel 12, verse 6. But we're not going to um, uh, spend much time there. It's, that's when David uh, mentioned, when Nathan came to David, and, and David mentions uh, fourfold there. But in Exodus 22, let's look at verse 1 here. Hidden in these words is a spiritual teaching. And so we, what we'll do is we'll look at uh, 
some of this language. For example, in Exodus 22 and verse 1, it says, If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Now, when you read this, why is God just selecting those two animals? There's, there's hundreds of other animals, right? So why, why an ox and a sheep? Why not some other animal there? And so, um, when we look at this ox, in Hebrew it means bullock. And, and it was used as a peace offering or a sin offering. And we're going to see that this bullock or this ox is a picture of Christ. Um, for example, in Numbers chapter 15, in verse 8 there. Numbers 15 and verse 8. It says, when thou preparest a bullock for a burnt offering or a sacrifice for, in performing a vow or peace offerings unto the Lord, then shall he bring with a bullock a meat offering of three-tenths deals of flour mingled with half a hen of oil. And thou shalt bring for a drink offering half a hen of wine for an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. A sweet smell, a sweet aroma. And the same language is found over in um, Ephesians chapter um, 5. Listen to this. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2 there. It says, be, follow, be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God, a sweet-smelling savor. See? A sweet-smelling smell. Aroma. And that's, uh, that, that ox or that bullock is a picture of, of Christ. Now, this, um, uh, and like I said before, this, um, this oxen or this bullock is also used as a peace or a sin offering. In Leviticus chapter uh, 4 and verse 3, it says, If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring for his sin which he has sinned a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. So that's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our sin offering. Okay, now it says a sheep. So, the, so it has to go right hand in hand, ox and the sheep. So if we see that Christ is a picture of that bullock or that ox, then the sheep should follow. And so sure enough, this, this Hebrew word sheep is translated many times lamb. And, it's, and I'll give you an example here. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 7 there, 7 and 8. It says, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. That lamb is the Lord Jesus Christ. The lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Okay, now let's go back to Exodus 22. And it says there, and kill it. If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it. Now you're starting to follow this. Our sins is what Christ was crucified for. Here, this person's going to, if he kills it, see? And, and this word kill in the Hebrew means slaughter. And look where it's found over in Isaiah 53. And we're familiar with that, right? Where Christ, uh, it's a picture of the, the um, prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, becoming sin for us. But right here in in verse 7, 
He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb. That's the same word, sheep. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. That word kill means slaughter. It's the same word right there, slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. So you see how consistent this is about the sheep, the ox. It's pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so going back to um, our text, we ought to, we ought to see that the, the ox um, and the sheep go hand in hand. And now it says he either kills it or sells it. So if we get the kill part of it, the sell should be the same. And if you recall, in Genesis, you know, Joseph is a type of Christ. And his brothers stripped Joseph and threw him in that waterless pit. And, uh, and then it says that the, uh, Joseph was sold to the Ishmaelites. And then the Midianites sold him into Egypt to Potiphar. And spiritually speaking, that, that pit and, and everything that happened there is a picture of, of Christ enduring hell for our sins in that pit. And so um, we see this in, in the, uh, the Gospel of Matthew where, where Judas betrayed the Lord for 30 pieces of silver, right? He was sold and betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver, silver in a sense. And it says there that uh, the Lord, in fact, I'll read it. In verse uh, Matthew 27, in verse um, 9. Well, let's, start, let's go to Matthew 26, and then we'll go to 27. Matthew 26, 14 and 15 there. And then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they coveted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And then over in um, Matthew 27, verse 9, it says, Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value. So see how it sell and kill goes right hand in hand with uh, Christ being crucified or being delivered up just as um, the, his brethren uh, threw, threw Joseph in the pit there. Okay, so going back to Exodus 22, and we're going um, we're gonna to get into this four uh, restore and the four sheep and that kind of thing right now. It's, um, it says he and he shall restore five oxen for the ox and four sheep for the sheep. Okay? Now, this word restore is, is uh, interesting to me as well as I looked, uh, as I st was studying this. It means to be safe in mind, body, to be complete or sound. And it all goes hand in hand when we're born from above. We have a sound mind. We're in our right minds. We're complete in Christ. Listen to uh, this verse here in Job chapter 22. Because it used the same word. This word restore is translated peace. And Job 22, look, listen to verse 21 and 22 here. Acquaint now thyself with, with him and be at peace. That's the word restore. Be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thy heart. See how uh, being at peace with God has to do with laying up words in thy heart? And so we're going to look at a little more at that in a minute. Um, but this word peace is a, is a word over, used over in Proverbs 16. And if some of you are familiar with that verse, it says, When a man's way please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Now, you know, par Proverbs is a parable. In other words, in those words, there is a spiritual teaching there. 
So who's the man? Who's the enemies? And if we just work with that for a minute here, when a man's ways please the Lord. In John chapter 8, 29, Jesus said, For I do always those things that please him. So who's that man? The Lord Jesus Christ. When a man's ways please the Lord. Jesus says, For I do always those things that please him. Who are the enemies? He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. God's elect. In Romans 5 verse 10, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. See? God's elect are his enemies, that we are reconciled to God. So when a man's ways are at peace, uh, please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace. And we have peace with God. We're reconciled to God through the cross. But that's, that's, the, that's a, a parable. Proverbs is a parable. And so we bring out the gospel. We bring out the spiritual teaching. And, and uh, there, there you have it, how the peace is used. We have peace with God. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do now is is go back and, and talk about this four, this four sheep. Now, in Exodus 22, again in verse 1, it says, If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for the ox and four sheep for a sheep. In other words, fourfold. So, Job told us in, in 22, that verse I read, lay up his words in thy heart. And in Matthew 12, 34, it says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, speaketh. Okay, so spiritually speaking, this is how we restore fourfold. Spiritually speaking, in salvation, those that are born again, those that are, are uh, uh, saved, are going to speak forth the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the witness, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We are His, uh, His witness. And this is how we restore um, fourfold, as, as Zacchaeus said in, in Luke 19.8. So, the four implies the whole the number four when you search in the Bible and implies the whole earth. For example, in Revelation seven one you read language like the four corners of the earth or the four winds. Okay. Now we restore fourfold those sheep. How do we restore the sheep back to Christ? As each one of us that are saved goes forth with the gospel the lost sheep, God uses the word of God, the lost sheep return to Christ. Do you see that? God's lost sheep come back into the fold. And so that's how we as believers restore fourfold to God. As the gospel goes out in the world, it's like saying I'm restoring fourfold because um, uh, the Bible talks about we're lost sheep. And he uses his people as the word goes forth to bring his lost sheep uh, back into the fold. God's elect. Back into the kingdom. Now this is uh, brought out in, in many verses, but let me give you a verse that's, uh, that teaches these things. In John chapter 17, John chapter 17, listen to verse 17 here. John 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also send them unto the world. Or them, uh, yeah, them into the world. And, th and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. 
Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. See? Christ sends us into the world, and we share the gospel, we witness, and through their word, people are going to believe. So spiritually, that's how we restore the, the, the sheep. If a man steal a sheep and, and, or kill it, and our sins is what crucified Christ. And so when we are complete, when we become saved in Christ, now we restore, we restore fourfold by the gospel going forth and his lost sheep coming back into the kingdom. Okay? Now... There's a verse uh, I like to touch on. It's found, um, there's a key word. There's a key word that, that, um, that's in Exodus 22, verses 2 and 4. Uh, but I like to go over to Proverbs chapter 6 and, and, um, and work on that verse because the same word's found over there. And you'll see how this all is a, uh, a picture of how Christ draws his elect. The Father draws his elect into the kingdom, draws his people. Well, look at Proverbs chapter 6. Okay. Men do not despise a thief, verse 30. Proverbs 6, verse 30 and 31. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. But if he be found, if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. Okay, so let's work with this. Just like we did with, uh, with uh, Luke 16 there about when a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord. So right here in, in these words we have... Uh, a picture of the gospel, the, the characteristic of the gospel. But men do not despise a thief. So who are these thieves? Who are these thieves? If we go over to Matthew 27, let's look at one verse there. In Matthew 27, look at verse 38. Matthew 27, verse 38. Okay, then were two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and the other on the left. This whole world, all mankind are thieves because we're sinners. We rob God with our sins. And there's a picture right there where God is, is, is uh, demonstrating this is a picture of all mankind. And we know that there are some that are saved and some that are lost. Right there on the cross, it's taught that. When Christ went to the cross. And so we know that Jesus told the thief um, in Luke 23, 43, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. We know he was a born again, child of God. So right on the cross there, hanging, uh, crucified with Christ, were found one that was saved, one lost. One vessel of mercy, one vessel of wrath. One vessel of honor, one vessel of dishonor. And that's, that's the picture of all mankind. We're thieves. We rob God with our sins. And now go back to, to uh, uh, Proverbs 6 there. And it says, uh, men do not despise a thief if he steal. And we already looked at steal and has to do with our sins. Sinners. And Jeremiah brought, brought that out. That uh, um, we're den of robbers and he lists a number of sins there. So stealing has to do with sin. Um, and then it says there in verse... And it's similar to what Zacchaeus said in Luke 19.8. If I, 
have taken anything from any man by false accusation, by robbery, defrauding them. See? And, and Zacchaeus seen his, has seen himself as a sinner, and that man is Christ who we rob. But this word satisfy, okay, this word satisfy means, um, it says there, to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. And what satisfies our soul when we're hungry spiritually? The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of life, satisfies our soul. And John chapter 6, in verse um, 35 there, Jesus says to, unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And um, also, I like to read Psalms 146. And listen to this language. 146, verse 5 through 8. Happy is he that hath God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseneth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. It's all language of salvation. He loosens the prisoners. He gives food to the hungry. Okay? And um, uh, so we, we're sinners. We're thieves. And we sin against God. Psalms 51 verse 4. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. So going back to uh, Proverbs chapter 6. <clears throat> We are, we are satisfied with the bread of life. Um, a thief, if he steal, to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. And i like to read one more verse that goes with this in, in uh, Psalms 107 verse 9. 107 verse 9. And there it says, For he satisfies satisfy us the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. He satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. In verse 31, it says, but if he be found. Now we know if we're going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or be hungry for the gospel, Christ makes us hungry for that gospel. Christ gives us that hunger and that thirst after righteousness. And the, the key word, though, if he be found. And that word found in the Hebrew means to come forth. You see how that's a, a picture of someone becoming saved? If he be found... And, and uh, we, we'll read some verses in the New Testament that go right with this. But it means to come forth. And listen to Psalms 32 here, verse 5 and 6. Psalms 32, 5 and 6. It says, I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions, unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Salvation, see? Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Now we know when we're sin, sinners, we hide from God. See, that's why in verse 5 there of Psalms 32, 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. What did Adam and Eve do when they, when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? evil. It says they hid from God. See, and that's, that's the nature of mankind. We, we hide from God. See? And, and God finds us. God has to find us. And so, um, 
here's some verses that go with the, the, uh, the word found or how God uses that language in the New Testament. In, uh, in Luke 15, 3, What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Okay? In verse 32 of Luke 15, uh, the last half of that verse says, For this brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Okay? But if he be found, that's salvation. We're all thieves. But the nature of a thief is not to be found. Right? A thief doesn't steal something and then... And then uh, and then uh, go, go back and say, oh, uh, uh, look, I stole this and this and this and the other thing. That's not the nature of a thief. He keeps doing it, you see. And so um, uh, the nature, that's why we can't do anything to get saved. God saves us. See, he finds us. And the nature of a thief is to, is to continue in that sin. And so let's go back in Proverbs uh, chapter 6 and finish up here um, but if he be found he shall restore sevenfold he shall give all the substance of his house now this word restore is is the same word over in Exodus 22 verse 1 he will restore fourfold I will restore fourfold or uh, four sheep for a sheep and it means the same thing, to be complete, to be at peace. And in Colossians chapter 2, the, uh, verse 10, it says, um, we're complete in Christ. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. And so, this is salvation. when we're, We restore our relationship with Christ. And, and hand in hand is speaking forth the gospel. Just like Job said, that, that in his mouth are the words, uh, our heart have uh, the words of God. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, the mouth speaketh. And so, this word sevenfold, I shall restore sevenfold. And we know seven is completeness or perfection. And, and again, it's, it's given our lives to Christ. It's, it's the same idea there as, as Zacchaeus was bringing out. So whether it's fourfold or sevenfold, it means the same. Because, it, because you, you, it's hand in hand. When you're saved, you go forth with the gospel, we give our lives to Christ. And this is, this is the nature of salvation. And, and um, sevenfold, it's the completeness of being in Christ, the perfection of God working in His people. And, um, and in that sense, we, give our, uh, we go forth with the Word of God and, re, and the, the sheep, the lost sheep, uh, as the Word of God goes forth in the world. The lost sheep come back into the fold. And so here it says, He shall give all the substance of His house. And this word substance in the Hebrew means wealth, riches, um, to be a light. So it goes right with salvation. And I thought it was interesting... Um, this, ver this uh, verse over in Psalms 112, chapter uh, 112, and verses 1 through 3. There it says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And, uh, and his righteousness endureth forever. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. house. So we know that the, the wealth or the riches is Christ's faith that God gives us. It's Christ's righteousness. It's, it's the gospel. It's the Holy Spirit that dwells in the believers. Um, and this word house is that inner man. See, the inner man that, that God dwells in. 
He dwells in that inner man. He dwells in this house. That's why G Jesus told Zacchaeus, salvation has come to this house. Not, not, not his literal house. He, salvation came to Zacchaeus. Has come to this house. You, Zacchaeus. He says, come down. I call my own sheep by name. Zacchaeus, come down. And so, salvation has come to this house. Um, i like to bring out also another verse that has to do with the house. But um, look at Proverbs 15 and verse 6. If you want to go there. Proverbs 15 and verse 6. It says, In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. Christ is our treasure. And uh, if you look at Proverbs 21 and verse 20 there, Proverbs 21, 20, there is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but the foolish man spendeth it up. Treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, in the house of the wise. We know the oil is the, God, the Holy Spirit. See, the treasure is the Holy Spirit, is Christ. And so, this is a beautiful picture there, again, of salvation in, in Proverbs chapter 6. So, uh, briefly, uh, um, go back to Proverbs chapter 6. Men do not despise a thief if he steal to satisfy his soul when he's hungry. But if he be found, he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. All mankind are thieves. We rob God. We're, we sin. And God gives us that hunger for the gospel. He gives us that hunger so that we can believe in the bread, to take in the bread of life. And he, we are found. God finds us. And, and we restore sevenfold the perfection or, or the completeness of Christ in us. And so... Um, we give all the substance of, of his house, of our house. Christ has taken up his residency now in us. He dwells in us. And because of that, we speak forth the word of God. We live our lives for Christ. So the question is, are you returning or restoring fourfold to God? Thank you for this time. <laughs>